The Rebel Alliance, in my opinion, were fighting for a noble cause against the tyranny of the Empire, who as we all know, had perpetrated a slew of horrendous acts in the past. In saying this, the rebels weren't all sunshine and rainbows, and they themselves had committed acts that could even rival imperial levels of brutality. With that said, in this video we'll be highlighting three times the rebel alliance will be classified as the bad guys. The aim of the Rebel Alliance was to essentially keep the public on their side, as without their positive public image, recruitment rates would drastically slump. Although they maintained a favourable opinion throughout the war, there were some things that the public didn't have to know about, including the underground torture methods used by, albeit, many of the more extremist cells. Due to the secrecy of the Rebel Alliance, there is naturally a lack of information on the interrogation methods used on Imperial prisoners. Although we don't have much detail on the methods used to interrogate prisoners, we do know of the telepathic cephalopod called Boar Gullet thanks to the release of Rogue One. Boar Gullet essentially fed off the victim's emotions while simultaneously reading their minds. Usually after the creature had finished this scarring interrogation, the victim was driven insane. In saying this however, rare cases sometimes permitted the victim's mental survival. Say what you will about Palpatine and Vader, but the majority of the Imperial soldiers and officers were merely fighting for what they believed was right. They saw rebels as terrorists trying to disrupt the peace and stability created by the Empire, particularly in the Core Worlds. Aside from the rebels usually murdering captured Imperial troops and seeing them as nothing more than dogs, they were even more bloodthirsty for Imperial officers and admirals. One of the most controversial public executions of an Imperial Grand Admiral was that of Oswald Teshix. Although he doesn't look it, Teshik was known to be one of the only compassionate high-ranking Imperial officers within the army. Shortly after the Battle of Endor, however, he was captured and tried for war crimes. Even though there was no evidence of Teshik committing any atrocities throughout the war, the Rebel Alliance still sentenced him to public execution due to the Rebels needing a high-ranking Imperial scapegoat to take the fall. Bad actions can sometimes be done for good reasons but that still doesn't negate the fact that these actions are inherently bad. A classic example of this was the destruction of the second Death Star. Compared to the destruction of the first Death Star, the second one I consider to be morally skewed. Not only was the second Death Star not even close to being fully operational, but there were also millions of slaves and independent contractors working to finish the artificial star. In saying this, when the rebels attacked and destroyed the second Death Star, they simultaneously took millions of innocent lives with it. Although they were presumably preventing widespread destruction, they could have waited until the Empire had started stationing more and more military on the star. Therefore, rather than killing the slaves and contractors, killing Imperial soldiers themselves. All in all, the known rebel war crimes paled in comparison to the Imperial ones, as in my opinion there simply isn't enough information on how deep the rebel rabbit hole goes. I believe the rebels have committed many more inhumane acts that we just don't know about because they are so well hidden. In saying this, for this video I want to hear your opinion, do the rebels just have really good propagandists or are they actually living up to their noble cause and keeping the inhumane acts to a minimum? Tell me your opinions in the comments below and don't forget to join the communities on Instagram and Discord, all links located in the description below. As always guys, thanks for watching.